Hey, it's Jason. I want to start today's video off by talking about something that happened to me recently. And I got to be honest, it's hard for me to even talk about because it makes me really upset. But I hope it will serve as a general warning to not be an idiot like me and set a foundation for why this video may be important for what I'm guessing your needs are. So as someone who makes video content for a living, having the proper amount of storage is legitimately a serious thing to address. I shoot everything in 4K resolution and I have over 475 videos that I've produced for this channel alone. And each long form video on average is around 30 gigabytes. So I need a lot of storage. So what I did was this, I used these external storage units like the one I have here. I had two of them, 14 terabytes each, one for an archive to store all my final cuts and the other to store all of my stock footage on all the products that I've reviewed. And these were fine as they provided a good amount of storage that I could use as needed, but it was a pain to plug in and use as they require physical connection. And worst of all, I didn't set them up with any security should something go wrong. And of course, something went terribly wrong. One day I was needing some old files and I plugged in one of the units and it just wouldn't show up on my computer. I kept plugging and unplugging the cord, nothing is happening. And then like an idiot, I plug in the other unit to see if that one would work. But again, nothing is happening. That's when I realized that the power supply that I was using to plug in the hard drives was not the one that came with the units, but one that's used to power one of my studio lights. And because the power settings are different, it essentially fried both of the external hard drives. Seven years of videos, gone in an instant. No! Now as horrible and kind of devastating as that is, I'm lucky in the sense that most of the content that I have to store is either for archive purposes or things that I can in a worst case scenario reshoot if needed, but this can be a total F my life situation if you're like a wedding photographer or videographer and all the footage you shot is now gone. Hence why I decided never again, I'm gonna do this right, which ultimately brought me to the wonderful world of network attached storage. And NAS at the end of the day provides two core things. Number one, it allows you to create a large storage pool that you can access virtually anywhere without it needing to be hardwired to your computer, much like a personal Google Drive. Number two, it provides data protection that will help save your data should anything go wrong. So you're not completely screwed if and when it does. Now it's very possible if you're a newbie like me, you've probably Google searched the term NAS only to get more confused but what likely has been a common denominator in your search has been the company Synology. Synology is by far the most recognized brand when it comes to network attached storage solutions for general consumers. So I actually reached out to them explaining the problem that I was trying to solve and they were cool enough to partner with me on this video. Now, full transparency, this video is not sponsored by Synology. They're not paying me to make this video and they did not review it prior to me uploading it, but they did provide me with some of the equipment in this video. So keep that in mind. And rather than this being a review, it's going to be me sharing how I put all this together more as a guide for those that also might be wanting to go down this rabbit hole. And I will touch on how my personal experience has been up to this point. Okay, first and foremost, if you want to jump into the world of network attached storage, you're going to need to get a disk station. Synology sent over their DS923 Plus, one of their more popular disk stations that has a four bay configuration. It comes with a power supply for the unit itself, two CAT5 ethernet cables, as well as keys for the base in case you want them locked. Synology also sent over four 12 terabyte Synology hard drives, one for each available bay. Now, quick note on the hard drives, you don't have to use Synology branded hard drives for this particular disk station, but Synology did say that their drives are specifically designed and optimized for their hardware as they're vigorously tested for reliability and optimized performance. And they do come with a three year warranty should anything go wrong. So keep that in mind. Now installing the drives is probably one of the easiest things ever. You can easily pull out the trays in each drive bay and the trays themselves are completely toolless. So all you have to do is remove these two clips on the side. You're going to slide the hard drive into the housing and then snap the clips back on. And once you do that, just go ahead and slide the now filled housing back into the unit. Now, a few things to note, the Synology DS923 Plus also comes with two slots on the bottom of the unit that can be used for NVMe SSD drives. These are drives that are way faster than traditional SATA hard drives. And these could be used for two different things. Number one, they could be used for something called SSD caching, which basically helps accelerate the read and write speeds of the unit, but not for actual storage. Now, the second way that you can use these drives is for actual storage, but there's a catch. For the here and now, the only NVMEs that will allow this capability are NVMEs that Synology makes. Again, this is because Synology drives have been optimized for this unit and designed to support direct storage. Well, third party NVMEs have not, hence why those are limited to caching only. 
Now, I personally bought two 400 gigabyte Synology NVMEs mainly to test this out. They were super easy to install as they slide right into the available slots. This is not something that you have to do by the way, but I thought I'd pick them up just for the sake of testing. Also, because the DS923 is essentially a computer itself, it does come with RAM that Synology has made upgradable. You can access the RAM by pulling out the bays and it does come with four gigabytes of RAM in a single stick. There's two RAM slots and it can support up to two 16 gigabyte sticks, which I did purchase on my own to upgrade. Again, this is definitely not required. If anything, this is total overkill for my needs, but in the spirit of testing this out, I really wanted to juice this unit to the max. Now, the last thing that Synology did send over is this 10 gigabit ethernet card. The unit comes with two one gigabit ethernet ports, but there's a slot here that you can unscrew to very easily add this 10 gigabit ethernet port. This is for those who have a 10 gigabit ethernet connection available on either their router or computer to give you significantly faster data transfer speeds. I personally don't have a 10 gigabit connection, but it is something that you can easily attach if you have one. And real quick, if you're finding this video helpful, can you do me a favor and press the like button and definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already. Okay, so after getting all the drives and optional upgrades installed, you next have to set up and connect the server to your computer. Now there's two ways to do this. You can directly connect the DS923 Plus to your computer via ethernet connection if you want to, but if you want that Google Drive type of capability where you have essentially your own cloud storage, you need to connect the DS923 to your network. Now when I was watching videos on how this actually works, virtually everyone that I would watch would skip over this detail, but all you have to do is take the ethernet cable and plug it into one of the ports on the disk station and then connect the other side to your router. I have a mesh router with these extenders that have gigabit ports built in on the back. Super convenient because my main router is all the way upstairs. But this is how the DS923 will make all the hard drives that you just installed available wirelessly like a Google Drive and the setup is a lot easier than you think. First, you wanna open up a browser on your computer that is on the same home network and go to find.synology.com. From there, press the connect button and it'll guide you to install DSM, Synology software that allows you to manage the data in this server. And I'm not gonna go through this entire process because it is pretty easy as this is a fresh install, but I am gonna leave a link to a comprehensive setup guide that will walk you through each step in the description. But once you have DSM up and running, this is what it looks like. It has a very straightforward user interface and the first thing that you're going to want to do is set up the drives that you have installed on the DS923 Plus. So click over here on DSM and then click on storage manager and this is where you're going to set up your storage pull and volume and this brings us to one of the more important areas of the setup, deciding on which RAID configuration you'd like to have with your drives. So again, if you're a NAS noob like myself in your research, you probably ran into the term RAID like a million times, most likely not fully understanding what it is and why it's important. The simplest way to explain it is that RAID configurations are used to protect your data in case any of the drives fail. Now there are multiple different configurations to choose from that will also depend on how many drives that you have installed. But for my setup, I went with a RAID 5 configuration. This allows me to retain all of my data even if one of my drives completely craps out as the DS923 Plus will manage redundancy across all four drives as a safety measure. So if one drive dies, all I have to do is take the faulty one out and replace it with the new one. And with the RAID 5 configuration, I won't lose a thing. Now this does require allocating some of the 48 terabytes that I have towards this redundancy, so keep that in mind, but I highly, highly recommend having some RAID setup to keep your data protected, especially if you're doing any sort of client work where the files that you're storing are critical. Now I'm gonna do the same setup for the two NVMe drives that I installed earlier. And again, because these are Synology NVMEs, I can set them up as storage and it's super easy to do. Okay, so you have your storage pools and volume set up with hopefully some level of redundancy baked in. Now it's time to create some shared folders. Go to control panel and click on shared folders. Give the folder a name and select the volume you just created. And once you have the shared folder set up, you can now access the folder in Windows or Mac OS like it's a folder on your computer. Now I have a Mac, so in order to do this, all you have to do is open up Finder and click on Network under Locations on the left. You'll see your named NAS populated there, so double click on that. Then you're gonna click Connect As and then type in the Synology username and password you set up earlier. And just like that, you could see the shared folder in your list of locations. And look, you could just drag and drop files into the folder like so, it really couldn't be easier. Now you can also add shared users to specific folders like 
family members or other people that you work with, like a video editor perhaps, and it's pretty fantastic that they're able to access this data from virtually anywhere in the world. Plus, Synology has a lot of great apps that you can download from DSM for things like dedicated photo sharing or setting up a Plex server for movies. I've never realized how much that you can do with the NAS. It's pretty great. At the end of the day, I have so much more peace of mind that I have a storage solution that provides me a ton of reliable data that I can effortlessly access at any time, anywhere, and I have some safety built in so I never have to deal with losing all my files again. And I have to say, shout out to Synology. Yes, they did provide a lot of the gear that I just went through, but I totally get why they're the leaders in this space. They make this entire process so much easier than I thought it would be. I'm gonna leave links to all the gear that I covered in case you guys wanna check them out in the description below. And if you're into the NAS space or are curious about it, let me know what you guys think about this setup. Did I do it right? Or is there something I should have done different? Curious to get your thoughts. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. And in case you guys missed my latest iPhone 16 and Pixel 9 videos, check them out here. They're gonna help you be as informed as possible.